Hello and welcome to Regeneration Codex. It's about a 20 minute conversation, clipped from a very long conversation about the mystic body of Christ, 12 disciples, and the zodiac. My name's Damien. That's the introduction out of the road. If you want to introduce yourself any more than that, Jeremiah, before we talk about the book of the secret book of James. I know that is that that is the best formal introduction that you can give somebody. Okay, cool, cool, because <laughs> I kind of didn't even expect that. I thought we were going to be going by code names, but yeah, it's no, all right. off with the code names. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, the book of James, the secret book of James, and we might do um, two parts to it if if you're up to doing a second part and just keep this part skimming off the surface and just going through it. And the way that these wild, outlandish, crazy interpretations actually start falling to the ground and start, you know, we start really recognizing these books for what they really are is when we find out that deep parables are being spoken, deep paths. Like, how do you how do you speak about a path in the invisible, but use physical things to represent an internal spiritual path? These things get very, very confusing to a very linear thinking generation where our language is even linear. We have it's very complicated for us to understand esoteric concept, but because of this flood of information, we can look at things like Marvel comics. We can look at things like Greek pantheons. We can look at things like Mesopotamian pantheons. Or we can step back and look at Bible patriarchs and apostles, and we can step back and we can start to see that every time a nation rose up. It rewrote the physical reality into a nationalistic code. You know, something that makes them the the you know the bearers and the carriers of the only truth that ever was, will be, and ever can be. They put it in their context. So, like if I read Mesopotamian literature, the kings of my land <laughs> would actually start representing the powers that are in the stars. Just like if I'm reading Jewish or Hebrew history, they've taken an anthropomorphized for the retention of historical context, <laughs> real things with invisible powers, with esoteric concepts. And when you realize these things, how these things overlay and where our language comes from, <laughs> how we see and perceive things and how it all builds on each other, Superstition goes the way because you realize that they are not talking about real things. The real thing has been self evident to everybody from the very beginning, but they're using mysterious words and anthropomorphications, like things that humans can understand, that like making God into their own image, so that they can somehow emotionally relate to a God. <laughs> you know, instead of just letting the image be God uncomprehensible unfathomable yeah. beyond understanding <laughs> and yeah. and we're just growing together in our ability to understand and communicate about it and that's the loving journey you know yeah that's <laughs> also that the good thing absolute ridiculous superstition goes away when you get to a, a clear understanding of what these books are culturally historically yes and they're not yeah. stories <laughs> they're not stories and that's what I find too because when I'm reading you know and and just basically you know with whatever you read from these texts especially when Yeshua was speaking you put yourself in that first person and then you and that kind of gives you a, a measurement of how far out of the truth you are within yourself or with it with with ignorance and that's what I kind of get through the secret book of James he is he is really hammering them with with their ignorance and kind of saying, I can't do no more here. And then he's, <laughs> but I can, I, where I'm going, you know, you can't come, but <laughs> I can do more where I'm going. So let me go. Mm -hmm. And I find that interesting too, because when I look at, you know, when you personalize this journey and 
you found, and I, I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm like, I found myself um, with that idolization of other people. I found it, and wanting them to give me the secret, give me, show me who I am. You do it. You do it. You do it. And then you know, just and um, and then just at the top, in the, at the start of the book of James, he's he is saying he's virtually saying to them straight up that they can't that he can't order them but again it's on their faith and he's told them numerous times that it's it's their faith that saves them not his and um and then he says no one will enter the kingdom because i ordered it but rather you yourself are filled so right there he's telling them that you're ignorant for even asking me that question why would you ask me that question? This and this is the thing, they were, and he knew that, so he knew he had to leave, and he knew he had to do what he had to do because that was the fruit that we eat off, that they're going to eat off. They just were still asleep. <laughs> yeah. So this is a huge, huge admonition for people that you know are saying that they want to be sovereign. Because there's this thing that happens, like, if the house is empty, someone will come and occupy it. I think he starts to say later, you know, he calls them, you know, woe unto you vagabonds. You that who have, you know, you've been given a body to possess, and you choose not to possess it, and your body has become a den of thieves. Like these other, these other influences or egos or gods or agendas have more willpower in your life than you do yourself. And, you know, he was trying to say, I can't save you from that. I can't do this for you. No, you got to do it. And if I did, if I did do it for you, I would just be another one of those. You don't want me to do this for you. (laughs) And, you know, honestly, here's the deal. If you are going to submit yourself, and that's this is this is hard for this generation too, because we're a generation that has a hard time with devotion, that has a hard time with trust, um, deep trust issues, that has a hard time with um, with following or being a follower. <laughs> um, if you cannot devote yourself to a principle higher than yourself to purify and test yourself. You will never be a, a disciplined or a disciple of light. <laughs> yes. It's directly connected that we understand things like devotion, that we understand things like law. You know, law is not a bad word. If you ever find one, forget it immediately because you never want to use the law against another person. <laughs> but to understand law, to be able to execute the good, is true wisdom Um, but yeah a lot of these concepts are broken concepts to our generation because they've been hurt by legalistic thinking they've been hurt by you know submitting to poor leaders and they've been hurt by devoting themselves to heroes that are that have faults you know and the hearts Um, are numb because of that because of the amount of confusion that they've been, that, we're, that everybody's been bombarded with, it's numbed the heart so much that it's a couldn't be bothered, couldn't even be bothered to wake up, and that's why the truth is going to hit them harder. And you know, like it says, their hearts will give out all of this, these kinds of things. That that's going to hit them even harder when they wake up without having to choose it. They haven't they didn't choose to wake up? They kind of the veil dropped on them. <laughs> it wasn't a forced wake up. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, that's kind of like the idea that these Luciferians have with um, with catastrophe. Like somehow they're working good through making catastrophe because even if somebody's asleep, if you make a loud enough noise, they'll get out of the way. You know. You don't, they don't have to be conscious to be led around in fear and 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 making noise. And they may think that by exercising their anger or their dominion over another person that they're doing good. 
but they're really just enforcing the sleep and they're contending directly with consciousness and people being able to wake up and have a nice awakening. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and I feel like a lot of one of the places we need to learn how to stand is to protect consciousness and the innocence of people. Um, it's not about ridicule. It's not about shame. It's not about, you know, using devices that are contrary to consciousness to somehow make somebody grow conscious look faster. I think these are, these are concepts that need to go away. Um, these are concepts that a lot of us are having to learn how to shed off because our parents were raised under a discipline that was um, at the end of a stick instead of a discipline that was led by a creative father. Yes, and that, that's father another teaches thing. teaches the child discipline through creative for action and for thought. That's how you create, teach your child to have a discipline of a disciple's life. If you're beating a child, that's, this is, <laughs> this does not give them conscious discipline. Um, and we're, we're a generation that's having to learn that on hard levels because we've come out of the Great Depression. Yeah, so you know, that's a be, big entanglement. I don't care how you feel about it, you're gonna get your ass up and work or you're taking a stick because we're all gonna die this winter. That might serve a generation that is, you know, steeped in resourceless, you know, systems and they're really, really broken. But like in America, you can't starve to death here. Like you can't. <laughs> We're so spoiled. This is actually disgusting. You know, you can't starve here. Yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> 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 on on the other side of things that I was thinking of is that what I was saying before is personalizing you know the idolization the wanting it from someone looking outside of yourself because you want keys you want you want to you want to get it and then when you actually when I actually came to it um, then the question is and this is what you know when you witness humanity as it is and the all the the when you witness this manipulation at the magnificent scale it is, you can stand back and you ask yourself the question, because I'm sure that all of us were the disciples at one stage. We were all that ignorant. We really didn't. Um, we, we were trying to prove it to someone else instead of prove this truth within yourself to yourself. And so then you make you have to make that choice. You know, am I a disciple? He says here. Um, another thing he says, because this is, this kind of, this would make me feel disheartened because I remember going through stages of feeling disheartened um, the same way that these disciples did. But he said here, the, the other, this was pretty harsh, man. The other disciples have written, my, these are all the closest ones that walked with him, that knew him, knew him best, seen, seen the things he seen, um, he was doing, um, witnessed the love that he had, and they definitely didn't carry this love um, at certain points. Um, well, put it this way, they didn't end up with him, so all of them, so they didn't really, they were ignorant towards this love that he had too. Yeah, this is quite harsh, man. The other disciples have written my sayings down as if they understood without understanding. They have listened like fools or foolish people. And so here he is telling two of the disciples of the 12 and they're all, you know, equal. <laughs> and this is before they were filled, obviously, too, <laughs> because this shit filled them. <laughs> and then he was explaining to them just how ignorant the rest of the disciples are. What are you going to do that? How, how, what are you going to do with this when I tell you this? Because these two disciples are, all right, they, he, he favoured us, he favoured us, but... These guys were still in the same. These got. We all have to do the same work to get to sit in that office and to maintain that office. We all have to do the same work, and all of the stuff, the same stuff will happen. This is some of the things that I'm that I'm coming to, like when it comes to these twelve disciples. Um, you know, it's some disciples. Some of the disciples, the ring is within their grasp 
other ones of the disciples, the ring is not even something they're concerned with. And I'm saying that a little bit to get people thinking, because when you get on this carousel that's in the sky, you got on on a specific character in the zodiac, and you're riding in a circle. <laughs> Some of the creatures on the zodiac, they are positioned to grab the ring and go cha-ching, woohoo! But when you got on the zodiac, you may or may not have got on that that's even important to you like you might not be on this freaking super crazy mission to get the ring and have the most exciting zodiac <laughs> you might be sitting over here in a different part of the zodiac where you get to enjoy yourself and just enjoy watching that guy grab the ring you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we all chose the ride right we all chose the ride and we got on in a position that we were comfortable with to take the ride but this carousel's happening, guys. <laughs> and just like figure out where you are on the ride. Well, that's the question. Do your I, job I was, good. Yep, that's what <laughs> I was saying. Um, when I read this and it comes alive in me, I don't like it. And I, I was thinking, oh, okay, well, that was the question you, you ask. Like, that's the question you ask. Um, like, who am I in the disciples? Like, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? At what time? And then... Who am I in Christ? Who am I yeah. in this in this place? You guys, we're a body, and body has many members. And uh, you know, the the stomach never says to the heart, you know, I'm more important than you. It just doesn't. It really doesn't. And the evolution of the Christ, it was born in division. It was born of protesters was born of a, of a a vein that came out of the Catholic Church and said, I am not. It's called the protest movement, the protestants. <laughs> and this protesting nature serves as a increasing mathematical equation. You know, people just multiply and divide. But eventually you have so much division that some of the items find unified purposes and those division small pieces come together and they form an organ. Yeah. And so we have five major organs that have formed for the church right now. And they're the same five powers that we're all dealing with, the five powers that are given from heaven. Um, but those five powers are like the major organs in the body, the lungs, the liver, the stomach, the skin, you know, these five powers, the gifts of Christ, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, these are these are very specific powers for us as a body. There's a reason why we have five fingers. This isn't just, you know, woohoo esoteric talk. Yeah. Like and the galaxy is formed because you have five powers inside you that are divine powers that you have to learn how to manipulate. You know, yeah, come so into who you are in this world, in this, in this body. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the a lot of the Nag Hammadis are going to give us more of a three D view of what those powers are. Yeah, but those yeah. powers are the peaks of those powers are the ministry of Jesus. Yeah, you and know, so his ministry focuses we, on you to each one of those peaks and becoming true in your spirit beyond words and understanding a position. Of, of gratitude no gratitude you can't just be saying I'm thankful for this I'm thankful for that I'm thankful 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 eventually it goes gratitude yeah I'm just a thankful human being you don't <laughs> have to sit just, here and say I'm thankful anymore that is right? your frequency now it's gratitude I am thankful <laughs> it's who I am I have gratitude yeah. I am gratitude right <laughs> yeah and I'm noticing like with because you know what does it the ego measures the unique differences between e each other instead of being in that frequency of gratitude where you're just humming at that vibrative level in father's one of his attributes which is really all of his attributes when you really look at the scheme of things but it's the ego that measures <laughs> that measures uh, your difference against someone else's difference when instead of saying, well, hang on, I I'm grateful that you're the fuck. Sorry, language. 
<laughs> that you're the heart and I'm grateful that I'm this and you're uniquely different yep. to me and that is what it is. Your unique difference is your sovereignty and my unique difference is my sovereignty. It is what it is. Why would I even want to think on it anymore? Why can't I just go, okay, let's move, let's get on. Let's work out how to communicate. And appreciate if we just <laughs> shock and awed by the glory of something that operates completely different than me. But I need it in my life. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get very far without lungs. Yeah. I need people that are lungs in my life. Like that that apparatus of my spiritual body. There are people that do that for us. There are people that have that influence. Yeah, because And if is. I spent my whole life just hanging out with lung people because I'm I'm kind of lung biased. <laughs> I have some massive lungs, but I could be atrophied in better different places of my life. So like, you, you <laughs> so it's all good being a lung, but you you're not going to do well in my body because everything, you know, you're quite happy being yourself. It's like what you're not going to work with the the bloodstream, the white cells, the red cells. You're not going to work with these guys. Come on. Everyone's got to be like <laughs> And when you yes. look at it, when you do look at everything being set up in the image, in that image, this body, this is the secret that we go into ourselves we, we, with our mind. We move into ourselves and we see the secrets of Father. We see him in that secret place um, when they talk about the blood of Jesus and all that stuff. Well, th we're talking about spiritual blood in the spiritual body that is spiritual where this density mm, doesn't exist life. in the father. Yeah. So this density doesn't exist there. So you're not going to have this, but you're going to have the same image, which is us connecting. And they, and like I was, I was talking about the blood, same thing in the spirit, the spirit of, of the body. And then you've got the physical and the image. And that's where, yeah, where all the little secrets are, where father has hidden himself. In, in our mind so, so think about this this has been this has been really good for me because it's like it has to do with healing it has to do with body life it has to do with you know us as individuals working together um this this carousel this wheel of disciples these 12 constellations so they are they are specific groups of stars most likely some planets too, that sit in a fixed position in the sky and they emit a frequency shape. And there's 12 of them up there. And that shape is a lot like a, um, a wireframe lattice that's being projected on the earth. They have taken a long time to evolve to that position. Now think about our current galaxy. Our spiral galaxy spiraling out. All the planets that are sitting in this galaxy in their certain position, the stars, everything that, and this zodiac that's fixed around our, our place, those are in place to have to make this large tree that creates fruit that we call animals, minerals, and people. <laughs> Peoples are these fruits. So there's a little person on this tree called Earth, right? And this person is an exact replication of this galaxy, right? <laughs> and not only exact mini replication of this galaxy, but this galaxy is influenced by other galaxies that are formed just like ours. Like ours has a human body. The form is five fingers, 10 toes, you know, humanoid shape. So if you're in this one and you're on this peopling Tree on this in this zone, your your shape is going to be humanoid. If I was in one of these other galaxies, like Sagittarius, my shape is going to be four-legged humanoid. If I was over here in Capricorn, my shape is going to be fish humanoid. If I was in this, <laughs> so you can see these galaxies support life forms. But all these life forms are working together to create the life forms that we have here on Earth. Like, and thank you for stopping in, listening to this short chunk of a very long, long conversation on the mystic body of Christ, the blood, the formation, the disciples, the zodiac, possessing your vessel. 
Thanks again. This is Regeneration Codex. Hopefully we'll have another video out pretty soon.